Merhaba değerli izleyiciler. Bugün Brüksel'de Medya Haber TV stüdyolarında iki değerli konukla birlikteyiz. Eski dönemlerde Avrupa Parlamenterliği yapmış e, Jürgen Klud bizlerle. Aynı zamanda e, Doktor Sara Glin kendisi yazar ve aktivist e, bir Kürt dostu. E, bugün özellikle Kürt Halk Önderi Sayın Abdullah Öcalan'a uygulanan tecrit ayrıca 15 Şubat Uluslararası Komplosu ve Türkiye'nin e, savaş suçlarını konuşacağız. Ben şimdi konuklarıma dönmek istiyorum. E, thanks for joining us. Thank you for accepting that interview. Yeah, thank you for inviting me and it's uh... Pleasure for me to be here. Thank you, dear Sarah. Uh, thank you for coming. Thanks for joining today this interview. Thank you, and good to meet you in person. <laughs> thank you. So um, uh, I would like to start first of all with uh, Mr. Uh, Abdullah Öcalan, Kurdish leader Abdullah Öcalan, has been under isolation last 23 years now, and uh, since 1999. Um, so, what do you think? Um, Turkey is aiming by isolating Mr. Abdullah Öcalan, first of all. I think they, they've got themselves in a situation where all they can do, all they seem to be able to do is just to move forward and just, or, or rather backward, I suppose, and just they can only see how to close things down, how to do a military solution, how to stop the Kurds doing things. and and. And there's no way out of that, but it's it's all part of that. I mean, obviously, when they captured Oshalan um, 23 years ago, I think they'd be amazed at that they thought they were cutting off the head of the movement and the movement would die. And and the way that the movement has survived and gone on and thrived um, is not what they anticipated, clearly. Um, and they they haven't really worked out a way out. I mean, it, it is very much at the moment the, the, the Sri Lankan model, the, the let's kill everybody off, let's just treat everything by a military means, and that isn't an answer. Thank you. Um, dear Jürgen, um, as you know, the isolation is against also human rights as well. And European countries, they are upholding and they are claiming that they are upholding to human rights, but we can see on the Öcalan uh, situation, the human rights uh, doesn't work. So uh, how would you going to evaluate the silence of uh, Europe, European uh, constitutions and institutions as well um, against uh, this isolation? Why they are still keeping silence? Yeah, that's uh, really a pity uh, that <coughs> the European Union is, is uh, at least uh, really silent. Uh, but I, I think that that is caused by by the really really difficult situation, political situation we are in uh, since the last years. On one hand, uh, we we have the problems uh, with the. Uh, um, refugees. I, I don't like to say it. Uh, we have problems with with them. They have at least problems. No, we have problems, uh, of course. Uh, but when they came in 2015, you remember uh, it uh, was very easy for uh, uh, for, uh, for Erdogan uh, to say, "Okay, uh, I will open the border uh, if you don't uh, agree with with my demands." Uh, and I think this uh, situation uh, was against the Kurdish uh, people. After uh, Erdogan started the war again against the Kurdish people in. Uh, um, in Turkey, uh, the European side uh, was was afraid if we will um, complain against uh, the, the, the war against the Kurds, uh, Erdogan will open the, the border, and then we will have a lot of uh, problems uh, in uh, side Europe. Uh, that's one point, and the other point uh, is the situation in North Syria where the Russians uh, are active uh, as well, and uh, Russia is trying to split the NATO. I'm not a friend of a NATO, but uh, if you look uh, from a political point of view, you have to, uh, to consider that the NATO 
uh, if it should work, it has to work together. And uh, Putin, that's my impression, is trying to, to split the Turkey f uh, from the rest of the NATO, and therefore the NATO states, the member states of the NATO, and uh, a lot of, uh, of the European states belong to the NATO as well. Um, they have to be careful. It's a Kurdish question, and I think uh, that's one of the political reasons uh, why the EU is, is, is so silent uh, concerning the situation uh, of uh, Öcalan. And I agree entirely with you, it is uh, entirely against uh, human rights uh, to keep a person for more than 20 years uh, isolated uh, in a cell. Uh, that's not acceptable and that is against right. Uh, but on the other hand, you have a political situation and uh, in practice uh, the, the political decision maker uh, follows the, uh, the, the reality, the, the, the reality of, uh, of power settings. Yes, so that's, you that's underlined my point. that basically uh, uh, what happened 23 years ago, kidnapping Mr. Ojalan was uh, and keeping him under isolation is uh, with the political reasons. Uh, but another important issue as well you underlined is about the EU is keeping silence is uh, also uh, with coming up with the political reasons. So can you evaluate that little bit more for us uh, about this uh, isolation that still is on Mr. Abdullah Hocan and it's against human rights, we know that. But when we look at Abdullah Hocan's position, he's the a key name for peace and sustainability in the Middle East. So uh, why uh, still EU and uh, EU states and its institutions uh, still uh, not uh, making any noise about um, freeing Öcalan? Yeah, <clears throat> and another point uh, from my point of view is that uh, Öcalan is uh, the head or was the head uh, of the PKK and the PKK is listed uh, on the uh, uh, terror list uh, of the uh, USA and uh, of the EU as well. Uh, and uh, that's the reason why it's 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 not possible to, uh, to, to, to find a solution, a clear position uh, against this uh, violation of, of human rights. Um, especially, yeah, look, look to, the, to, to the German government. The German government is very strong uh, um, to, to support uh, the Turkish government. Uh, and uh, to oppress uh, all the political activities of Kurdish people inside Germany. Uh, be because they don't want to uh, disturb the political relation between Germany and, and Turkey. I think it's, it's always, it's, it's, it's very clear that's not acceptable, uh, but on the other hand it's very clear uh, why they do what they normally not should do. That's, that's very clear. Yeah. Uh, they, they have the, the, the principles uh, of, of uh, uh, human rights uh, on paper, but in practice uh, it, it is nothing worse. That's, uh, that's, yeah. that's, a, that's a situation, yes, that's the point. Yeah. Before we move to the, the delisting the PKK, uh, dear Sarah, I would like to ask you uh, about um, the 15 February international conspiracy. As you know, uh, that was 23 years ago, Mr. Abdullah Ujalan has been kidnapped. Um, what, what was the aim of kidnapping Mr. Ojalan? I want to underline that because it's a very important issue. Uh, the Western powers has had an aim to kidnap Mr. Abdullah Ojalan. What was it? How would you evaluate that shortly? Well, they thought it would be the end of the PKK. Um, and clearly they misjudged that very much. Um, I mean, it's it's partly about, as we're hearing, all, the, all the, the political relations with Turkey, but also it was a left-wing liberation movement and you know, we're not going to expect those powers to want to see the success of a left-wing liberation movement either. I, I just, could I just add one more comment about the human rights thing? Because of course, human rights, if they're to mean anything, they, they apply to everybody, so even if somebody's called a, t a terrorist 
um, you still human human rights must still apply because they're mm. universal rights. Yeah, thank you. Um, also, uh, on 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 international conspiracy, uh, uh, after uh, after the kidnapping, Mr. Ojalan, we can see that uh, if you put someone behind the bars, you can't put their ideas and ideology behind the bars as well. How would you going to comment on that? The 15 February international conspiracy has been successful or not? It's not been successful in, certainly not in, in stopping the movement or, as you say, in stopping the ideas and, in fact, in stopping the development of the ideas and that so much of what um, people have come to admire from all over the world in, in what the Kurds are doing are actually ideas that Oshalan has developed while in prison. And, of course, it's, it's dreadful to think that now he's probably going on developing more ideas and he can't get anything out. We don't know what he's thinking and the world is being deprived of the opportunity to engage with him on, on these ideas for a better world, which is terrible for all of us. Thank you. Dear Jürgen, uh, you mentioned the PKK is on the forbidden organizations list. That's another important issue. There is a campaign also going on about delisting the PKK from forbidden organizations list. Uh, so uh, how do you evaluate the Europe's um, approach to the PKK? Do you think is it uh, because on the list, because of the political reasons or if is, is there any other reasons that keeping the PKK on the forbidden organizations list? I, I think um, the it's it's Something is changing, yes. Uh, some years ago, I think a broad majority uh, was convinced the PKK is a, a terrorist organization. Uh, but a few years ago, in 2017, when I remember right, uh, the Belgium uh, um, Supreme Court uh, decided uh, the PKK is not a terrorist organization. It is an uh, organization uh, in an armed conflict inside a country. Uh, and uh, it is uh, more or less organized like an army uh, with a hierarchical structure uh, and with a head uh, at the top uh, which can control uh, the ways uh, top down. And that's typical for, uh, for organization in, in, a, in an armed conflict uh, and uh, that's not a terror organization. Uh, but it is only a very, very small first step and my hope is uh, that the other countries uh, will recognize and understand uh, that it's not, that the PKK at least is not really a, a terrorist organization but a part in an armed conflict. Uh, and on the other side, that's a little bit my hope, uh, that the fight uh, of uh, Kurdish fighters against um, ES uh, in in uh, Syria since 2014 uh, against the Islamic State uh, will convince more and more people uh, that we, uh, we, we we can't continue to to uh, to blame the PKK uh, as a terrorist organization. We 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 have to overcome that and we have to withdraw the uh, PKK from the terrorist list. Uh, that's very clear for me. But the problem is to convince enough uh, um, member states. Uh, you, you know, the member states have to uh, do a uh, animosity um, decision on, on this uh, to withdraw the PKK from, from the terror list. And currently, from my point of view, especially the German government uh, will not agree with this. And therefore, we, we have to find uh, and to develop uh, strategies to convince the member states, the governments of the member states of the European Union, uh, that we have to change our uh, view to the, to the PK, uh, PKK. Thank you. I will ask you, you the suggestion about delisting the PKK as well. But I want to ask that as well. Many people are saying that keeping Mr. Abdullah Jalan under isolation and keeping the PKK on forbidden uh, organizations these are two different faces of the same problem. How would you going to evaluate this? Mm. 
Uh, yes, I, I, I think uh, Öcalan uh, in, in 2013, when, when Öcalan started to, to stop the, the armed uh, fights uh, against the Turkish uh, forces, uh, it, it shows uh, that uh, the, the, the important role of, of Öcalan, and I think from my point of view, uh, it, it could be really helpful to, to free Öcalan uh, to to, to organize a new peace process. That's, that's, that's a central point uh, to, to pick up. I know it's, it's now, nowadays it's very difficult after the experience you have had uh, from, from uh, or since uh, uh, 2015 uh, to, to find back uh, to a path of peace. But on the other hand, uh, we need to come back, to find back to the path of uh, peace. And I think uh, it could be a very good uh, sign of, uh, of, of peace, of to, to be willing uh, to, to fight or to organize peace to free Öcalan. Uh, and that's, that's, that's my point of, of, of view to, 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 to this issue. We, 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 we should continue to, to fight for, for freedom of Öcalan, to, to change the situation and uh, to, to find back to a path of uh, peace. Yeah. So and I think Öcalan is crucial for, for, for this issue. Yeah, and also the PKK is uh, crucial as well to free the Öcalan, actually, yes. it's like mm -hmm. related. Dear Sarah, let's continue with you. I want to highlight the importance of the PKK in the region as well. And I would like to ask you a similar question. What is the importance of the PKK and how does that relate to the uh, freedom for Öcalan and how important is the Öcalan uh, for the region, many people are underlining that Öcalan is the key person for peace and sustainability in the region. How would you going to comment on that? Well, Öcalan is, is the key because he's recognised by so many millions of people as their leader and he's also recognised by the PKK. You can't have a, a, a peace agreement if you're not talking to the people who are actually fighting because those are the people who have to agree. Um, and the PKK have been hugely important in, in preserving Kurdishness in making people know that it's okay to be Kurdish and to enjoy being Kurdish. And I mean, it's, we have a phrase in Scotland where I've lived a lot of my life that people talk about the Scottish cringe of people who are who cringe, who are afraid to admit to their Scottishness. And I think without the PKK, for many people, there is what you might call, uh, there was what you might call a Kurdish cringe, a, a feeling that they couldn't be Kurdish and it wasn't, wasn't a good thing to be Kurdish. They had to be good Turks. And um, Oshalan very much destroyed the, the, the Kurdish cringe. So it's like Öcalan gave the identity back to the Kurdish people, right? or allowed them to d develop and be proud of their identity. Um, but of course it's much more than that and it's not just for the Kurds and, and the movement is, is, makes it very clear that it's for everybody to um, be able to express their own identity if they want to. I mean, it's not yeah. compulsory either. You, know. you are also part of it. In, in UK there is uh, 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 the delisting the PKK campaign also grows. Uh, so, uh, what is your call, what is your message to Kurdish people to support this campaign, delisting the PKK campaign? There is four million uh, signatures uh, has been targeted all over the Europe. So, uh, can you tell us a little more about importance of delisting the PKK and this campaign as well? Well, delisting the PKK is is crucial really for, for peace talks. I mean, I, I think it's, it's almost worth stopping and saying, you know, what do we mean when we describe some, something as a terrorist organization? Because a terrorist organization to most people on the streets, it suggests someone who's going to bomb you, it suggests some, somebody who's going to be bringing terror to probably random people, which obviously is not what they're doing. And it's not actually what the British terrorism law 
is the British terrorism law is an extraordinary thing what they can count as terrorism and it, it doesn't have to involve terror it doesn't actually have to involve an action it could be just finding out how you might um, block something on the web or something so it's I think a lot of people would be very shocked by actually you know if you actually look at what terrorism lo law does but so what it is is actually it's, it's a word that people use to put people beyond the pale and to say we, we can't deal with these people. And um, so it's a sort of form of prejudice, really. It's, we'll, we'll describe them as terrorists. So I think it's very important to lift it for peace, but also the way that um, Turkey has persuaded so many different countries to, to class the PKK as terrorists, and then within Turkey itself, they link any support for the Kurds, any protest against the government to the PKK, and then they justify it by saying, and this is an organization which is listed as a terrorist organization by America, by Europe. I mean, almost any article that you read, it will have this little sentence, this little sneaky little sentence in it that says, um, this, uh, the, the, Turkey links this to the PKK, which is a terrorist organization according to Europe and the United States, and suddenly it becomes, oh, we can't be sympathetic with these people. Can we shortly, can we call these uh, criminalization policies against the Kurds? Uh, I think so, absolutely, yes, the, yes. Okay. Um, uh, let's carry on with you, dear Jorgen, and you, okay. you, you, you highlighted the uh, delisting the PKK is important also. What else uh, can Kurdish community can do in Europe to uh, shame their government that the PKK is still on the uh, forbidden organizations list as well as what else needs to be done to delist the PKK? What is your suggestions? Hmm. It's not, not really easy, um, but I uh, <clears throat> observed that ten, 10 years ago you could read anything about uh, the Kurdish issue or very very rarely uh, in German newspapers uh, but meanwhile you can read uh, more often about uh, the situation of the Kurds as well and uh, the public opinion is more open not entirely open but more open than 10 years ago for uh, for these problems and for these questions or to these questions and uh, i i think from from my point of view it's Im important to 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 move on two ways. On, on one hand, uh, for the Kurdish uh, side, it's really important uh, to free Öcalan, but on the other hand, sometimes I think it's important to explain that it is not only Öcalan who is under pressure. There are a lot of uh, mayors, a lot of politicians, Kurdish politicians in Turkey, journalists, uh, human rights fighters, uh, they are in prison, they are under pressure, uh, and I think it's, it's more, I, I know that's not an entirely Kurdish view, uh, point of view, but from my point of view, you ask me what, what, uh, what could be done uh, to, to uh, stru uh, strengthen the, the, the uh, Kurdish uh, position and the Kurdish uh, point of view. I think then, then it could be helpful to f uh, draw the attention more to this, uh, to this other people in addition to, to Öcalan, not to forget Öcalan, but to say it's not only Öcalan, uh, it's, uh, but there, there, there is a big, big uh, situation of inhumanity and, and uh, violation of, uh, of human rights uh, and, and freedom of express and so on. So you can, you can uh, relate the uh, reasons of keeping Mr. Mr. Abdullah under isolation and keeping him in prison, as well as the other uh, political prisoners, Turkish left people as well. So yep. uh, it's all related of the uh, the Turkey Turkish government's approach to the PKK, as the PKK is still on the forbidden organizations. Is can we say if the PKK has been delisted, uh, Turkey would become maybe more democratic? Um, Can we say that if the PKK has been delisted, 
uh, would, is it possible to say that uh, that will open the doors to make Turkey more democratic? Because many political yeah. prisoners are uh, has been prisoned because of the PKK is on the forbidden organizations. This, how would you comment on that? Yes, I I, I agree. Uh, if, if, if you want to, to implement uh, or to, to re-implement, uh, I think it's better to say to re-implement uh, the process of uh, democratization in, in Turkey, uh, then, then you have to involve uh, the Kurdish side and that means at least uh, the PKK as well. Uh, you, you, you can't uh, have a democracy uh, with, with, uh, without uh, the Kurdish people in, in Turkey and without uh, the PKK, of, of course. And, and the other point is to, to remember what the Kurdish fighters did to fight the Islamic State. Without the, the fighters, uh, with the Kurdish fighters, uh, we uh, would have uh, to deal with, with this problem uh, until now. I, I know it, it's uh, under the carpet uh, existing uh, still now, mm, um, uh, until now, but uh, the, to, to, to fight them, to, to keep them down, uh, uh, was, was, a, was the success of, of Kurdish fighters. And, and, and we, we have to speak about that and we have mm -hmm. to underline that. We, we, we can't say fight against uh, the Islamic State and forget them uh, after they, they fight them down, yes? Yeah. And, and, and there many times uh, the Turkey support has been, uh, has been confirmed, has been proved actually uh, to the uh, ISIS gangs. Uh, so there is Turkey that calls PKK as a terrorist, but we can see very clearly that Turkey is supporting mm -hmm. uh, ISIS gangs. Yes. So how would you going to uh, comment on this, dear, dear Sarah, very shortly? The, what is the, who is the real terrorist? <laughs> well, as I, as I said, I don't really like the use of that word at all, though, I mean, it is interesting that actually when it was first used, it was sort of um, in France and it was the terror and the terror was coming from government. So it can be used for government, was yeah. first used for government. And clearly it, it's um, Turkey that's supporting, actually real terror. I mean, the, 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 to, to live in the, areas that are occupied by Turkey in Syria and run by those mercenary gangs, that is terror, that, 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 that life must be terror. Um, but I think when we're looking as well as at, at, the, at the bigger political picture, I think it's important when you've got, you've got governments who genuinely believe that they're fighting against terrorists and yet they're at the same time supporting Turkey, um, to make the picture very, very clear and to make people see that, that actually you can't fight ISIS and at the same time support, support Turkey and support what Turkey's doing because they are, they're not only giving that direct help and we know that the places that Turkey occupies are places that it's very safe to be, that's where they ISIS have their cells, it's a, become a safe haven for, for ISIS and for other similar gangs. Um, but even the very fact that Turkey is deliberately trying to stop the security and safety of the area, of that, of that whole region, and that's what makes a place that allows ISIS to grow. I mean, if, if you want to stop the growth of ISIS, you need security, you need safety, you need a place where the authorities that are there can actually make it a safe place for people to live and they don't feel that they've got to fight against it or, or be tempted, even in some cases, just by the salaries that ISIS are paying or these other gangs are paying. So for many reasons, Turkey is definitely is allowing ISIS to grow and to thrive, and not just Turkey, to be honest. I mean, the, the, the Syrian regime is also trying to destabilize things, which allows ISIS to grow as well. So, yeah, it's complicated, but I think that international powers are just really bad at just thinking, even, even, even if we accept that they're only going to think in their own self-interest, 
then at least they should think in a longer term and realize that their own self-interest does involve defeating ISIS, which has acted disastrously across Europe and other places. Um, and that defeating ISIS does involve taking a much firmer line with Turkey. Thank you. So I want to carry on with the Turkey's war crimes and humanity crimes as well. Supporting ISIS was one of the uh, biggest shame on the on the earth, honestly, uh, when, when it's proved that Turkey is supporting ISIS gangs, uh, they should be shamed, but they carry on uh, to supporting ISIS. So uh, also the European uh, states are uh, still keeping silence uh, against the Turkey's war crimes. Lately, we can see that uh, Turkey is using chemical weapons on the northern Iraq as well against uh, PKK fighters and as well as the uh, villages uh, mm -hmm. that civilians that lives in there as well. So uh, what would you like to say first of all about Turkey's war crimes and then I will carry on asking. Well ke chemical weapons is one that very much sticks out because chemical weapons is is so much a red line and but it is only a red line for many countries when it's the people they regard as their enemies are doing it. And what's very easy for them in northern Iraq is just not to look because there's been no independent investigation and the countries that should be organising the independent investigation aren't doing so. And without the independent investigation to prove it, they won't go and do it. Do it. You know, it's a sort of circular thing. Um, so they'd just rather not see. But of course, I mean, chemical weapons as I say, it, it's, a, it's a red line, but so many of the other things that they're doing are, are war crimes as well. And you know, something that really sticks out to me is, is cutting the water of the Euphrates. And what's more basic than that? You know, cutting the water that people need to live on. And this has gone on for over a year now, cutting down to, I think, less than half of, of the agreed amount of water that's supposed to come. And it's got so many knock-on impacts, and very deliberately so, as well as, you know, they, they've built other dams to cut water, they've, they deliberately bomb um, infrastructure, ethnic cleansing, massive eth ethnic cleansing, another war crime, um, and, and the mercenary gangs that they've brought in commit horrific war crimes every day with mm -hmm. rape and pillage and, um, kidnapped for ransom all the time. Thank you. You underline very important issues. Uh, I want to carry on with the uh, Jorgen. Um, the Turkey's war crimes uh, are getting worse, uh, as you witness on the media as well. Um, uh, also, the IPPNW and OPCW are two institutions that they established for uh, following up the war crimes of the related with the chemical weapons. and. Kurdish community as well as Kurdish representatives in Europe has knocked the door of OPCW many times now. And they are still not interested to go and do proper research about what really happened in the region related with the uh, chemical weapons allegations. Very shortly, please, we have a few minutes left. Mm -hmm. How would you going to evaluate that shortly? I, I think that's uh, not uh, acceptable, uh, like you said, that's a red line. But on the other hand, what I said uh, at the beginning, uh, the, the interest, the political interest uh, of some uh, states inside the European Union uh, are uh, very <laughs> unacceptable as well, because they, they, they do what we call uh, real policy. Uh, they, they, they deal with, uh, with, with power settings and to say we don't want to lose power and uh, then they accept what uh, they promised not to accept uh, and that we have to, uh, to, to make open and uh, we, we, we have to, um, to say it very open that that is not acceptable and if uh, Europe uh, will be mm, uh, trustful in, in future, the, uh, the European Union has 
to fight this and has to support uh, the, the research of, uh, of that was uh, of, of these crimes, of these uh, war crimes, yes. Yeah. Lastly, very shortly, can we take your message uh, for freedom for Erjalan to the, what is your call about freedom for Erjalan uh, to the European uh, states as well as what is your message to the Kurdish people who is going to watch that? I think the Kurdish people should uh, continue to fight for freedom for uh, Öcalan uh, and uh, they, they should take into account uh, what, what is going on currently, uh, the change of energy we, we have to do. Uh, we'll have a, I know it's, it's a different issue, but I, I want to mention it. Uh, it will um, mix up uh, all the situation, the political si uh, situation in the Middle East, uh, because when we will no uh, any longer use uh, oil and gas, uh, we will have a complete uh, different uh, political and economic situation, and then we need uh, stabilization, and we can't continue with this. Uh, uh, situation of, uh, of uh, denying Kurdish uh, people democracy and, and human rights and therefore um, my, uh, my message is take into account this uh, future, near future, new situations. Thank you. Dear Sara, uh, let's get your message lastly as well for the Kurdish people. Uh, what would you like to tell them about struggle and what is your call uh, to the EU? about uh, delisting the PKK as well as freedom for Erdogan shortly? Well, as, as I said, I think my call to the, to the politicians is to look long term um, and what you're doing is not even in your own interests. But my call to the Kurds actually is, you know, we could, those of us who know about what the Kurds are doing are just so excited and supportive. But you've got to get out there and you've got to let more people know so you know we, we don't so that we're not just talking to the Kurds so that um, because the, it's no good the Kurds just talking directly to the politicians because there's not enough Kurds and the politicians are only going to move when there's a mass movement and there's a lot more people than Kurds involved so Kurds have got to talk not just to the politicians but to, to ordinary folk on the streets and let's get this into a really mass movement that makes a difference. Sarah Glynn, thanks for joining us today and dear Jürgen Kloot, thanks, for, thanks to you as well that you accepted the interview. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Bugün Brüksel Medya Haber e, stüdyolarında e, Jorgen Claude e, önceki e, dönemlerde Avrupa Parlamenterliği yapmış ve aynı zamanda Doktor Sara Glin kendisi yazar ve aktivist e, e, olarak e, ağırladık. E, özellikle Kürt Halk Önderi Sayın Abdullah Öcalan'ın üzerinde uygulanan e, tecrit, PKK'nin yasaklı örgütler listesinden çıkarılması ve Türk Devleti'nin savaş suçlarını konuştuk. E, bir sonraki özel programda yeniden görüşmek ümidiyle.